Hello, a great welcome to the series on Abacus. Myself, Jarajan P. This is tutorial number seven and explains the analysis of a simple bolter lap joint using Abacus. This is a part B of the tutorial. The problem statement is already explained in part A and hence it will not be repeated here. So in this part, we will discuss in detail the implementation of the following modules for this tutorial, namely interaction module, load module, mesh module, job, and finally the visualization module for the interpretation of results. So let me take you to the backers. So please note that uh, we have covered uh, the part property assembly and step module in part A of this tutorial. Now in this part, we'll discuss uh, interaction, load, mesh, job and visualization. So let us start with the interaction. So obviously in this 3D model, we know that we have three parts and uh, the parts are in contact with each other. And uh, we need to tell Abacus uh, how these three parts are going to interact with each other and what exactly are their properties. And this is exactly we are going to do it in the interaction module. So in the interaction module, the first step would be We'll go for defining the interaction property. And the interaction property is normally defined in the two directions, one in the normal direction and the other one in the transitional direction. So let us start creating the interaction property. So I'll just I'll call it as interaction property, lab, and the type would be selected as contact, continue. And here we'll go to the mechanical. We'll first describe the tangential behavior. So in this case, we know that our uh, plate surfaces are in contact and the bolt head, the shank, etc. are in contact with each other with the plates. So let us first define the tangential behavior. The tangential behavior will be defined through the friction formulation. And here we can choose either a frictionless uh, contact property or there is a penalty function wherein we will be able to prescribe specified amount of frictional force existing between the surfaces. So let us for this problem choose the penalty function and here we will choose the friction coefficient as let me just take it as a 0.10. So we have defined the tangential behavior and now we shall proceed for defining the normal behavior and in the normal behavior we will choose the pressure over closure as the hard contact. You can see that there are many you know the options available here hard contact, exponential, linear, tablet, etc. We choose the hard contact and the, the constraint enforcement it will be taken as the default. So this means that we have defined how the various parts will interact with each other in both the normal as well as the transition direction. So we have defined our interaction property. Now next we have to go and start creating the interaction. Now Abacus has many methods available for uh, creating the interaction. For example, if I choose the initial, you can see that there are many methods available here. And the most popular being one we call it as a general contact, that's a standard, and then surface to surface contact again standard. So in the general contact, the advantage is that we need not to select the surfaces individually to tell Abacus, yes, these surfaces are interacting. Whereas if you go for the second method, that's a surface to surface contact, we have to go and tell Abacus which are the surfaces explicitly interacting with each other. So in this uh, tutorial, we'll choose the general contact, that's a standard method. And remember that there's a feature that is the standard general contact, it will be available only in the default initial step of the Abacus. So on the other hand, suppose that you choose the time step as the new analysis step that you have created, you'll find that yes, this a general contact is not available. So as we want to use the general contact, we shall create this interaction obviously in the initial step created default by the packers. So in this, create the general contact, general contact standard, continue. And here you'll find that yes, the contact domain it is given included surface pairs. We have selected all with the self. Okay? And here one very important property is that we need to tell Abacus which interaction 
property shall be selected for the contact. So we have already generated one property that is the interaction property lab. Select it. Okay. So, so if we uh, proceed to follow the general contact, we'll find that specifying the interaction properties and creating the contacts are a very simple task. So that's all about the interaction. Now we can go to the next module that is the load. So in the load module, we have two tasks. One is creating the boundary condition and the second one is applying the loads. So let us proceed for applying the boundary conditions. So we shall create a new boundary condition. I'll call it as BC and pint. Okay, so remember we will always create the boundary condition in the time step that is the initial. Okay, so we'll choose the mechanical and the displacement or the rotation. Continue. Now the backers will ask you select the regions to apply this boundary condition. Obviously, we want to apply this boundary condition on one end of the plate. Okay, and apply the loading on the other end of the plate. Okay, so we shall apply this boundary condition. So in order to see that phase, let me let us simply rotate this view a little bit. This is good enough for us. Okay, good. So let's uh, choose this surface. Okay, the region is selected for the boundary condition. Done. Now we want to restrain all the movements in one, two, three direction. You want you to do three. So okay, apply. So now you will find that yes, Abacus indicates some symbols for the uh, restraints at one end of the plate. So this means that the boundary condition uh, is complete and we can proceed uh, for uh, the application of the pressure on the other end of the plate. So we should go for uh, creating the load. So create the load, we'll call it as load, say it's a lap, okay? And remember that the load will be created in the new analysis step. This is the step that we have created. And choose the category as the mechanical because we are not interested in the other category. And here, as already indicated, the problem statement we shall apply a pressure load. So choose the pressure load. Continue. Now, Abacus will ask you select the surface on which this pressure load is to be applied. So we have the surface selected. Done. And now we'll apply a magnitude of minus under the MPA. Remember that we have to use the unit. Newton and millimeter. So here I am applying a pressure load of 100 MP, that is 100 Newton per meter square. And this amplitude is not relevant to us for this example. So this is okay. So you'll find that yes, the backers has rightly applied the load on the, uh, the plate surface. So means the implementation of the boundary condition and the load application is completed in the load module. Now we can straight away go for the mesh. So let me tell you. Uh, one very important thing that is a uh, meshing is a important activity in Abacus because uh, the way in which Abacus solves the problems and produces accurate results it depends upon the efficiency of the meshing procedures and the meshing algorithm and also the user's uh, uh, genuineness in selecting the right kind of the mesh control algorithms etc. And obviously we know that this is a very simple problem. So for this simple problem what we do is that we will not go for any kind of the local uh, seeding. We will try to mesh this uh, both uh, two parts, that is uh, both uh, the plate as well as the bolt, okay, using the global seed only. So in order to do the uh, meshing, so what we have to do is first of all, we have to go to the part. And uh, so let us start uh, meshing uh, with a plate, okay. So first of all, let us specify the uh, global seed size. So go to the uh, seed part, okay, and here we'll choose the approximate global size of this seed as of IMM. Apply. So now you'll find that yes, seeds are already marked along the different edges. Also, it is marked along the periphery of this hall, okay. So with a distance of a 5 mm. So this is acceptable for us, okay. So we did a global seeding of a 5 mm. Now let us proceed for selecting mesh control. Means it tells we need to tell Abacus what must be the uh, type of the element to be selected and what must be the algorithm to be used for the mesh generation. This is being done through the mesh control uh, sequence. So select this. So for this, uh, 
uh, we want to have a hex element type this is a simple plate so we'll take choose the hex element type and we'll choose that machine technique as a sweep and the corresponding algorithm we'll use as the medial axis with an option of minimize the mesh transition okay so okay so we are completed the mesh control uh, specifications also now let us go for uh, assigning the element type so what must be the element type to be uh, assigned and to be considered in the analysis so press this assign element button abacus will ask you to select the region select this entire part okay done now you can see that yes element library we used will be standard and this is a 3d color we'll use a 3d stress and geometric order will be linear quadratic obviously whether the, the linear or the quadratic to be chosen it depends upon the type of the problem and also the level of the accuracy expected for this tutorial we'll choose the geometric order as the linear okay and all others will choose as a, the default so um, here you can read the type of the element that abacus uses c3d8r this means this is an eight knotted is an eight means it's an eight knotted linear brick element r indicates in a reduced integration and with an hour of control okay, our glass control okay fine so this is all regarding the element type so remember in meshing we have three stages specifying the global as well as the local seeds here local seeds we are not going to apply because it's a simple problem then specifying what kind of algorithm and what kind of element type to be used and finally assigning the element type to the part okay now we are ready for uh, meshing this part so first it it asks you is it okay to mesh the part yes so you can see that yes it is already meshed and uh, if we see the front view you can see that yes it is uh, almost acceptable okay okay we could have used a little bit more finer mesh at this periphery but considering that this is a very simple problem it is not going to affect our results too much and abacus also provides us a, a, a method to verify our mesh before proceeding for a detailed analysis so this is here you can see that a label with a tick mark verify mesh so let us verify this whether this uh, the mesh that is generated is uh, satisfying the basic uh, requirements or not so let us verify this mesh so it asks select the regions to verify so select the center region okay so done now here what i will do is i will ask abacus to provide me all elements that is higher than with an aspect ratio of 3 and uh, the angle that is less than 10 and greater than 160 degrees please rem remember that the accuracy of uh, the results provided by abacus is greatly influenced by the geometry of the elements which in turn is governed by the aspect ratio of the elements and also by the uh, corner angles so let us press this highlight now you will find that yes uh, we have uh, aspect ratio greater than 3 uh, we have how much yes 18 elements yes these elements are having a higher aspect ratio and it's only 1.1 percentage it's okay for us average aspect ratio is 1.18 it is good and the worst aspect ratio is somewhere very near to 3 only 3.56 so and here you can read the number of elements that is available for this plate is 1636 and uh, this is okay for us so now uh, let us proceed in the same pattern for the bolt also because we have to do the meshing for the bolt as well so now proceed select the bolt okay now we'll proceed in the same way so what we can do is that we can go for uh, we can go for uh, this the seed part Okay, so we can choose it as, for example, it's a bolt is a small element. We'll have it as a three. The global size will have it as a three instead of five because it's, the size is smaller compared to the plate. So then, uh, okay, global size is okay for us. And uh, coming to coming to the assign mesh control. Uh, here, what we'll do is that here uh, we'll choose the tetrahedron elements T T, and we'll use the technique as a free. And the algorithm will be uh, use the default algorithm okay so that's okay for us and now we shall proceed for selecting the element types okay so select the regions to be assigned the element type select this entire one okay done 
define. So we shall choose standard 3D stress element and we'll use a linear geometric order. And accordingly, you can see that for the bolt, we have chosen C3D4 element, which indicates it's a four node linear tetrahedron. Okay, that is why we are calling it as a TET element A. So that's okay for us. This means that we can proceed straight away now for the uh, mesh part, yes. So you can see that yes, so the meshes are being generated properly here. Now, just like we did for the part, we can also proceed with the mesh verification here. So we can do the mesh verification. It will also select the entire region. Okay, that's okay. Now done. Now again, will you choose the same parameters? I will ask the backers to highlight. And here we'll find that we have uh, only one, only three, hardly three elements. That is a 0.02 percentage having greater than three aspect ratio. Average aspect ratio is 1.61. It's good. First aspect ratio is very near to three. That's 3.24. So this is being a very simple model. We don't have much problem as far as the meshing is concerned. So, so this means that this is okay for us. Okay. Now, um, this means our meshing activity is also over. Now we are ready to create the job and submit for the analysis. So we'll create the job first. Let me call it as a job. I'll call, call it as a job lab. Okay. So continue. We will keep all the default parameters. You will ask for the job type. We will specify the school analysis, run mode, the background, and immediately submit it. Okay, these are the default parameters. We will keep it as the same. Okay, now we can go for okay, submitting the job, and then uh, after submission, we shall monitor the activities. Okay, and once the analysis is complete, we shall proceed for the results. Okay, fine. The analysis of our model is complete. Now we are in the visualization module and we can start inspecting the various results. So you can find that yes, this is the deformed shape of our model. Now don't get surprised because here, as you can see, the model is fixed at this edge and the load is applied at the other edge. So we cannot expect the plate to remain exactly the straight because as you can see that the load is applied eccentric to the bolt which means that this will induce some kind of a moments in the plate as well as the bolt. And that has created some kind of a deflected shape like this. Okay, so this is because of the outer plane bending of the plate because the load is applied eccentric to this assembly. And now you can start inspecting the various uh, stresses. For example, here is shown uh, the variation of the uh, one minus as a stress resultant. So here, uh, if you want to avoid the mesh, what you can do is you can go over here. <coughs> the result, sorry, you can go over here, and here we have uh, the various options like whether you want to apply it, okay, whether you want to see it in a, uh, the with a mesh or without mesh. So let me have it right here. Yes, so this is the common plot options. In the common plot options, what you can do is you can go for uh, here. We have mentioned X-ray adjust. If you apply the feature adjust, apply, you'll find that yes, all the meshes are removed and uh, the variation is a little bit more uh, uh, pleasing. Okay, so we can uh, include or exclude the meshes using this uh, feature available here. That means either you can select the X-ray adjust or the feature adjust. Okay, now. Suppose we would like to see the stresses in the bolt, also a detailed inspection of the stresses in the plate. What we can do is we can go over this display list. Okay, this is the display group available to us. Suppose uh, we are uh, not interested in uh, this plate, that's a plate two. We can exclude it from the display. So below, if you see, yes. So this remove, you can remove it. Yes, it is removed. So now you can see that we get a better uh, view of uh, the stress variation is in the plate. Okay, so we find that yes, the stresses are uh, getting picked out very near to the bolt and it uh, reduces towards the edge of our uh, plate. And now suppose that we want to see the stress distribution uh, within the bolt itself, uh, we can remove this plate as well. So go to this display group. So remove the second plate or the first plate also. We'll just remove it. Okay, now you will find that yes, we have got only the bolt. You can see that yes, you can find the stresses uh, 
in the bolt getting accumulated near the shank cushion, okay, which ensures that yes, all contacts are working properly as expected. Now, uh, other feature, uh, other uh, parameter that uh, normally designers are interested in is in the contact stresses. So let me just add all these plates. So you can see the all elements, you can add it. So means that yes. Now we have uh, all the elements of our build loss. You can inspect the contact stresses, the variation of the contact stresses through the parameter C plus, that's the contact pressure. Okay, so the contact pressure obviously we expect in, uh, to be developed in parts where there's a contact. For example, suppose uh, we want to inspect, okay, so let me just do the common part options. So let me just remove it. Yeah, we'll call it as a feature of Jamie. Okay, that will be better for me. Now let me just uh, take inspect what will be the type of the contact stress that is developed in a plate. So we can go over here. Now let us remove the bolt as well as uh, the plate one from this group. So remove. So now we can see that yes. Okay, so this is how the stresses are getting developed. Look here. So it, this means that we are developing the our contacts are working very properly. And uh, this is this is stress is because of our uh, plate hole surface are getting in contact with the shank of the bolt. And here again, you will find that there is some kind of a stress accumulation over here because we know that we have uh, the head of the bolt in contact with the plate at this location. So this means that our contact algorithm is working very nicely for this uh, plate. So let me have also remove this plate and include this bolt. Let me just include it, add. And uh, let me remove this plate to with all together because I don't want this place right now. So look here. So this uh, provides you how the contacts are developed within the bolt. So you can just rotate it a little bit. So this means that yes, it is working properly. So we have we are getting the contacts uh, getting developed within the shank portion. Also, you'll find that yes, some part of the bolt head is also under uh, stress concentration. Okay, so this means that the contact algorithm is working very nicely for this plate and uh, please uh, be aware that the contact problems are, uh, I should say that these are uh, the problems uh, very simple to model, but to get the results, you may have to do a lot of refinements, you need to have a very good understanding of the models and how the backers uh, starts implementing the various parameters into the module. Okay, so I think that uh, the result interpretation is good enough for us. So uh, we can conclude this part to be here. So we'll come up with interesting tutorials in the coming weeks. Till then, bye.